Parenting is a tough job. Even the best of us can make mistakes. However, some behaviors and actions can negatively affect a child's development and well-being. And in this episode of The Impactful Parent, we're going to explore what bad parenting is and provide examples so that you can recognize it and avoid it. Hello, my name is Christina Campos. I'm founder of The Impactful Parent, and every week I give you parenting videos that can help you in your parenting journey. If you have a particular topic or parenting question about your school-age child that you would like for me to address, please submit it at theimpactfulparent at gmail.com or by messaging me on social media. And all submissions are kept anonymous. Today, we're going to talk about bad parenting. And just because you may recognize some of the 10 bad parenting moves that I'm going to be telling you today, it doesn't mean that you're a bad parent. We all make mistakes. But if you're trying to be the best parent you can, or you want to learn from your mistakes, or just need reassurance that you're doing everything just right, then this episode is for you. So let's get started. Bad parenting number one, scolding your child with an audience. Scolding a child in front of an audience can be a bad choice for several reasons. According to Psychology Today, shaming and humiliating children is emotionally abusive and can negatively affect a child's mental health and self-esteem. In fact, research has shown that scolding can make a child feel fearful, defiant, or even aggressive. Bad parenting number two, reprimanding a child harshly even if they spoke the truth. Now I get it. Maybe your child did something without asking and is only telling you the truth because they got caught. But reprimanding a child when they told the truth teaches a child that honesty, it's not valued or appreciated which can lead to future lying. This is where you must find a way to hold your child accountable for their actions without holding that offense against them. Suppose you reprimand a child and don't give them some sort of resolution for being truthful. In that case, you can create a cycle of dishonesty and mistrust. And instead, Focus on teaching your child the importance of honesty and how being honest can make things easier and better for them. Bad parenting number three, comparing your child to someone else. Comparing children to others can negatively impact your child's self-esteem. It can cause feelings of insecurity and breed unhealthy competition among siblings or even peers. For instance, a child constantly compared to their siblings in a negative light may feel inadequate. It breaks their trust and makes that child feel like they are not good enough, which this could be leading to aggressive behavior and even bullying others to feel better about themselves. This is why parents should try not to compare their children to anyone except for maybe your child's past self. So you're only comparing how they've grown. According to a study, children who compare themselves with their past selves are likely to have a more healthy self-esteem and not compete with others. Bad parenting number four, neglect. Neglect is one of the most damaging forms of bad parenting. It involves failing to provide a child with food, shelter, clothing, medical care, and emotional support. Neglect includes leaving a child alone for extended periods of time, maybe feeling to seek medical attention when your child is sick or not providing adequate supervision, and even it's not giving your child enough attention or affection because kids need their parents. So examine your schedule And if you're leaving your child home a little too long, or maybe not giving them quite as much attention or affection as maybe you could, that's the place where you can step up your parenting game. Bad parenting number five, physical abuse. 
Now, physical abuse involves intentionally causing harm to a child's body. And most parents know that hitting, kicking, slapping, or burning a child is unacceptable. Still, more common examples of physical abuse that fly under their radar are shaking a child, hitting a child with an object, or maybe even locking a child in a closet. That would be abuse too. Physical abuse can also be holding your child to a particular weight standard, like making a child overeat. And an example of this might be insisting they finish all the food on their plate when it's loaded to the brim with food and just more than what their stomachs can hold. Or it could be depriving your child of nutritional food, like having a household full of potato chips and canned foods. This type of physical abuse is way more common than a lot of people even realize. Bad parenting number six, role modeling behaviors you don't want to pass down. Yeah, (laughs) what you do in front of your child matters. Kids look at their parents for how to act. And if you drink a glass of wine every night after dinner, then your child is more likely to grow up and mimic that behavior. Children who witnessed domestic violence were more likely to repeat the behavior of the adults that they saw. So you can tell kids not to do whatever it is that you're doing, but actions speak louder than words. Kids learn much more from their eyes and life experiences than whatever that you told them. Bad parenting number seven, when a parent avoids understanding and listening to a child's feelings. Not listening to a child's feelings can damage mental health and self-esteem. And it's way more common than we think. So if you catch yourself saying things like, don't worry about it, you're making a big deal out of nothing, or stop crying, or there's nothing here to cry about, then consider how you are devaluing and belittling your child's emotions. This can result in the child feeling like their feelings are unimportant, and that leads to long-lasting effects on their emotional well-being. Bad parenting, number eight, emotional abuse. Emotional abuse involves harming a child's self-esteem. It could take many forms. It could be belittling, it could be insulting, threatening, or even isolating a child. Emotional abuse can have long-lasting effects on a child's mental health and the ability to form healthy relationships in the future. Examples of emotional abuse include constantly criticizing a child or withholding affection, or blaming a child for problems in the family. Many parents that are emotional abusers don't even do this intentionally. So usually these parents, they were also parented with emotional abuse growing up, and they didn't even realize that they're passing down the same behaviors to their children. So watch that you don't always have a criticizing tone in your voice, or a cor- or you're constantly correcting your child, making them feel like they can't do anything right. Bad parenting, number nine, inconsistent discipline. Inconsistent discipline can confuse a child and make them feel insecure. It can involve punishing a child for one behavior one day and then ignoring it the next. It can be implementing rules one day, but ignore that same rule later. This makes it difficult for a child to understand the consequences of their actions. They're always playing a guessing game of whether or not they can get caught. and also creates feelings of instability and anxiety. It even teaches kids to be manipulative. So stay consistent with your discipline, with all your rules and your expectations. Bad parenting number 10, overprotection. Overprotection can limit a child's ability to develop independence and self-reliance. It can involve shielding a child from any potential harm or failure, which can prevent them from learning important life skills and coping mechanisms. 
Whether you are a helicopter parent hovering over your child, ready to catch them before they fall, or a lawnmower parent mowing down all the obstacles that can be in their way, both kinds of parents can lead to childhood anxiety and other mental health problems. Examples of overprotection include not allowing your child to play outside, or pampering a child too much, or simply taking a stand that you know better all the time. (laughs) Instead, it's important to allow your child to make choices. Give them as many choices as you can within the boundaries of your rules and allow your child to make mistakes, even if you know the mistake is stupid. If this information was valuable for you today, become a more impactful parent by downloading the Impactful Parent app. The Impactful Parent app is free and full of episodes just like this one to help you in your parenting journey. Because investing in your family looks like learning the warning signs of certain behaviors so that you could stop the bad things before they start. And discovering new parenting techniques to make your parenting more effective. There is so much inside the Impactful Parent app, you just have to go and check it out. And since it's free, you have nothing to lose. So go to your app store on your phone and type in Impactful Parent and I'll be there. Or even easier, go to theimpactfulparent.com and click on the link. So discover how you can step up your parenting game and become a more impactful parent. But until next time, you got this, parents. I'm just here to help.